Ich bin der so much. I want yes. to bring up uh, a few really special people without whom this film would not exist. Uh, first, Alan Glasser, our producer. Uh, Neil Konigsberg, our producer. How are you, Neil? Uh, John Bacardo, our co-producer. Is here somewhere? Our cinematographer. Oh, who am I forgetting? Hmm. Uh, Sit down, okay. Tab says sit down, right? Okay. Standing ovation. It's amazing seeing that on, a, on that big screen, my gosh. I haven't seen much, trust me. So uh, to see it like this, I was very, very impressed. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. And thank you, your wonderful audience. The thing is, it's a different Hollywood today than it was then. But uh, it was a wonderful time, and there was a simplicity and a naivete about it that I absolutely love. And that's long gone. But uh, wonderful memories, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. I, you, it sounds like you did, and thank you very much. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, with this kind of crowd, uh, we need to turn it over to you right away. So, questions from the audience. Right here. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey, for making this film. I'm of the age that Tab Hunter means everything to my adolescence. <laughs> um, what I, I want, one question that's not in the film, and this is not a criticism, is that you worked with Tallulah Bankhead in a Tennessee Williams play. That's right. And if, did, uh, which I saw, I, and I'd like you to talk a little bit that, about it. Yes, I did. I did do uh, uh, The Milk Train Doesn't Stop Her Anymore, the Tennessee Williams play with Tallulah Bankhead and Marion Sellers. Yes. And Bobby Dean Hooks was a wonderful cast. <clears throat> Very short lived on Broadway. But uh, we couldn't fit it all in, there's only so much you can do. Daryl Zanuck years ago used to say, you know, I buy these uh, bestsellers and I can't put it all on the screen in a short amount of time to tell the story I want. So you have to pick and choose what, it, what you can and what you cannot use. But uh, that's one of the things I wish we could put in there, along with a couple of other things too, but uh, there's, you know, this isn't War and Peace. <laughs> <laughs> DVD extras. Uh, here, please. Uh, one of the things that always kind of struck me about your career was, was William Wellman's influence in, in your career. Uh, he picked you out, and that's in the film, and then brought you, you know, used, uh, cast you again in Lafayette Ex Escadrille. Did you have a kind of special relationship with him? What do you think he saw in you? I loved Bill Wellman. He was terrific. He was a tough guy. He really was. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, well, I turned on a film for him. And he said, you dirty SOB of our paths ever cross again, blankety blank. And I, uh, I was a nervous wreck about that. I went off to Europe and I wouldn't shoot the ending of the picture with a chica. Because they had to, I couldn't die and a chica couldn't commit suicide. Which is the original ending and a true story. But Hollywood had to have his la 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 ending. So they kept calling me in Europe to come on back and do a new ending. And I said, I will, but I don't want to see Bill Wellman. What am I going to do? You know, he's going to cuss me out, and he never wanted to work with me again. And I walked on the set. I said I would come back if he didn't say a word to me. I walked on the set, and he put his arms out, and he said, come here. Oh. He gave me a big hug. Now, he was a wonderful director. He did some very, very fine films. 
There are a lot of directors that have been overlooked in Hollywood, and I do believe that Eastwood was one of them. I have to interrupt with a question that the uh, actual the staff asked for, and it was, how did you know you needed to make a film with our guest, with Mr. Hunter? Uh, well, I don't know if anybody has read Tab's book, uh, also called Tab Hunter Confidential. It's a great book, great read. And um, I met Tab and Alan when I made I Am Divine, which played here a couple years ago. And it was through the, the course of making that film that I met them, and I ran into Neil um, a few years ago, and I said, I just interviewed uh, Tab and Alan, and I think this would make a great documentary. And he said, well, I know them. <laughs> and Alan has been wanting to make this film. And Alan, you know, has been really the force behind this, this film, I have to say. So I, I would love for Alan to talk about how this came to be. But for me, I just, you know, I, I, I love this story. I was especially fascinated with the double life aspect of it and how um, in a very repressive time, uh, Tab survived this very repressive time and came, came out the other side as a, a happy, healthy survivor and standing before you right now. So I think anybody can identify with this story of sort of self, self acceptance. Tab is a very private person, so I just I just want to just um, say that he it's very wonderful of him to share himself with us, and I really appreciate the trust that he put in put in. Well, I think Alan can really tell you a great deal about how we got rolling on this. Uh, he was the one who talked me into doing a book. I would never have done it. Uh, you know, I like I say in the film here, I am happy to be forgotten. I mean, I've had a wonderful career, and a wonderful life, and uh, but Alan said no. Uh, well, let him tell you, Alan. <laughs> Just a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we met Jeffrey when he was filming I Am Divine, and he had a, such a great way about him in our interviews, and he got so much more out of me than I even knew I had to say, and I thought, if I could ever get this movie going, he'd be the perfect director for this, because he would get what I needed out of Tab's cohorts to really make this an interesting film. And I mentioned that to Neil, and two weeks later, Neil is at a party where he runs into Jeffrey in New York. And then the next thing I know, I talk to Jeffrey about it, and he said he'd be delighted to uh, direct the picture. And it was difficult because Tab really didn't want to do this. He's, he's so private, and you can tell how reticent he is about a lot of things. And he's, he's very shy about it, so for Tab to come out and talk about this, and allow us to do the movie. I, I have to applaud you because, uh, you know, it's it's not his comfort zone. But he, we surrounded him with people like Neil and, and John and Nancy, and, uh, that he felt very comfortable with, and he was brutally honest in this in this picture. And that's why I think it's such a good picture. I really do. Well, I think the wonderful the, the thing that I love is that it isn't all just Hollywood, 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 because that can get pretty boring. But I love the fact that it is, I call it a journey, as you mentioned earlier, which it is. It's my, you know, the, the early years, the Hollywood years, and the golden years. And uh, the journey was incredible because I met some remarkable people. I'm thrilled that Alan was able to bring them together to come and talk a little about the film and, you know, about my life. and. Uh, I can't believe we're here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a I do want to add that the reason why this film is so good is due to Jeffrey's talent as a director and editor. Because, you know, I had the, the, the want to do this as a producer, but, you know, that goes but so far. You, you have to have the talent to make something good. And, and Jeffrey, I want to thank you because you made this good. Thanks. Thank you. And of course, Alan, being a collector of memorabilia and stuff, he's got everything from the, my baby pictures, as you well know. He must have driven you nuts. Can I say, you know, when, when we make a documentary like this, usually the first step is to do this archaeological dig and just trying to find all this material. And, and Tab didn't collect anything. He didn't have a scrap. He had, there was one award that you won that I saw in the house that's, that's the doorstop of the bathroom, you know? So Alan spent the last 30 somewhat years collecting materials. By the time we were ready to start, he, there, was a, there was a storage unit in their backyard and they call it Villa Debris. And he opened up the storage unit and it, it was, everything was there. We had to find a few things, but not 
Very many. So it's, it's, and it's all up on the screen. And every time I would buy a picture off eBay tab, it's saying, what are you wasting your money on that crap for? What do you want that crap for? You know, I said, oh, maybe it'll come handy one day. And it did. <laughs> One more question from the audience. Your hand is up, please. Um, I'm curious about your brother, Walter. He was mentioned in the beginning, and given the fact that you thought he was the more outgoing one, it seemed like he should have gone into show business. So what did he do for a no, my, <clears throat> no, my brother went into the service. He was a career man. He was killed in Vietnam. He was in medic, medical evacuations. And uh, he was a pretty incredible man. He introduced me to one of the loves of my life, my horses. Uh, he was the one who was able to make me go forward a little bit because I was scared of my own shadow as a kid. He was an amazing man. And I still am very close to all my nieces and nephews today. They're great. And my sister-in-law, too. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you, South by Southwest. And to the top of the